In this video, I want to take a look at the current stratagems that we have at our disposal and tackle three separate design objectives to make better stratagems. The objectives will be to make stratagems that are 1. A creative and feasible addition to the current sandbox. 2. Powerful tools that encourage teamwork, kind of like the paired loading. And 3. Fit the Helldiver theme and universe. With these objectives in mind, I limited myself to four non-weapon backpack stratagems that I believe will achieve all the objectives above. I also implemented a set bonus that if you wear a full set of gear matching the backpack type, you will get a secret bonus to the stratagem. I'll go on to explain this later. Up first, we have the radio backpack, whose flavor text reads, the M07-5 is a full-spectrum radio that keeps the Helldiver connected to their destroyer above. A good radio man is oftentimes the difference between life and death. The inspiration I got for this stratagem came from Milsim games like Arma 3 or Squad, and the effects of the stratagem reads as follows. Effects can only be used in a 40 meter radius around the radio operator, and the effects are not stacked, so two radio packs don't receive double bonus. Provides greatly reduced call-in times for all airstrikes and orbitals. Nearby locations will be automatically added to the minimap. We'll be able to double ping a location to course correct area for a lingering orbital. So imagine a, um, a walking barrage or a 380. You'll be able to move it to your location after calling it in if your target moves to a different location and you want to move the barrage somewhere else. Jammers will have less jamming range, so instead of jammers being able to jam multiple objectives, they will only be able to jam the immediate area around the jammer. And to have a little bit of indication, a green check mark will indicate um, whether the buff to your orbitals and airstrikes are being applied, and whether or not you're in the 40 meter radius to receive those buffs. For the additional buff I mentioned earlier, when you have on an engineering kit or a scout kit, for example, these armors, you will proc a helmet bonus while wearing this backpack stratagem. The bonus is called Danger Close and reads as follows. Danger Close allows the radio operator to become immune to orbitals and airstrikes as long as the wearer is laid in a prone position and not moving for three seconds before the orbital or airstrike hits. Firing any weapons will not negate Danger Close. Moving WASD will negate danger close. Teammates in range of radio pack, the 40 meter range, will take reduced damage from orbitals and airstrikes while danger close is active as long as they too are prone within three seconds before the orbital or airstrike hits. I got this idea from a movie called They Were Soldiers, um, and specifically this scene. Next up is the Tac Pack 808, which flavor text reads 808s, as they are commonly called, are a military all purpose ballistic plate designed to put more armored distance between you and your enemies. The inspiration I took from this came from Rainbow Six Siege, which has a character called Rook uh, who does the same thing. He provides protection to the squad and makes his team better just by being there. The effects are Supplies the team with Exapi tactical plates, increasing the armor of the wearer by one tier without decreasing your speed. Only one plate can be worn at a time. So basically, if you're a medium armored character, with the plate you'll become a heavy armored character with the same speed as a medium armored character. A blue health bar will indicate when the tactical plate is inserted. So if you die, you'll have to replace your plate. The backpack will come with six plates, the carrier will be able to replenish some of the plates that he loses through normal supplies. He'll get four plates per replenish. The carrier of the plate pack will also be impervious to damage from behind, kind of like the ballistic shield, but in a smaller area and just down the middle of his back. So the set bonus will be activated by characters wearing any heavy armor. The set bonus is called Thick Bones and it reads as follows. Carrier of the attack pack plus heavy armor will be automatically granted one tier of armor higher than what they currently have. So you'll go from a heavy character to a, I guess, a super heavy character. Um, 
can add attack plate for one additional bonus. So you won't be restricted because of this bonus. You'll be able to go up two tiers of armor. So you go from a super heavy to a, a hell dive heavy, I guess, if you want to call it. Carrier also has increased melee damage, allowing the carrier to kill a devastator or brood commander, enemy type in one to two melee hits. Decreased damage when falling from great height and creates shockwave upon landing. So you won't take as much fall damage and when you fall, you'll create a big AOE shockwave on, from the point of uh, impact. Enemies caught in shockwave will be damaged and stunned. So basically you become like a human stun grenade and you can wrecking ball yourself into a pile of automatons or terminates and basically stun a whole area of enemies in from that point of impact. Next up is the healing drone uh, whose flavor text reads as follows. We've reset our laser drone parameters from searching to kill enemies to helping allies. Works 98% of the time. The inspiration from this came from Risk of Rain 2. In that game, you can take a healing drone with you or buy a healing drone, and it'll support you as you climb up the difficulty ladder of that game. The healing drone works by hovering above the carrier and shooting healing stims at the lowest health player or the player the backpack carrier pings twice. So we wanted to give some agency to the carrier on who they wanted to heal, if they wanted to heal um, whoever the bot decided who was the lowest health character, or if someone was in a more dangerous position that maybe they need some stim to get them out of that dangerous position. We'll heal for eight stim shots before returning the backpack to reload. And the time here can be varied, but I think like a minute to a minute and a half is a good reload time. If the stratagem is seen as really strong, then it can be a little bit longer, but these are just times to play with really. Stim buffs like experimental formula will stack, so you will get the extra speed and um, the little bit more healing with the experimental formula, and the bot will carry that as well. Will only heal in a 40 meter radius and can heal anyone in that range as long as there is a line of sight between the drone and the target. So you can't just run around willy nilly. You need to be your medic needs to basically see you for you to be able to heal. The set bonus will be activated by characters that carry any medic set, for example, this one. And the set bonus is called Savior of Liberty, and it reads as follows. Carrier with set bonus is allocated a bigger health pool than normal. Carrier moves faster when running towards an injured player. When an injured player is healed by drone, player is healed a tiny bit. So, in this set bonus, we wanted to give the carrier some incentive to be team medic. Oftentimes the support or healing class is a very fragile class and I didn't want that to be the reason players don't choose the stratagem. I fumbled around with giving the medic a very tiny auto heal over time but I, th I settled on this because I wanted the medic to have more of a reason to go around healing people because he gets something back from it than just going off on his own because he knows he'll be fine by himself. Um, let me know if you feel the auto heal would be a good fit for the stratagem or if this stratagem is just strong enough as it is. Before we get to the last stratagem, I wanted to talk about the choices I made in making these stratagems and giving out the perks that I did. It's no secret that the auto cannon is S tier as far as support weapons go, and this was the bar I set for myself to reach that S tier level. Additionally, I feel the game is most fun when the squad is working together, fighting off the enemies of democracy as a unit instead of alone in the corners of the map by themselves. The stratagems I design don't force you to work together, but reward you greatly for doing so. 40 meters may be too far or too close, I'm, I'm no game tester, but it's really the idea of limiting the range I want to uh, I want to get across, so players are more likely to be together and set apart. Lastly, I wanted to add set bonuses because I feel we need to add some spice to the armor, give it more purpose. For one, the helmets and capes should have some abilities that will allow players to start build crafting. As a Destiny 2 refugee, some of the best moments in that game were the builds you can come up with, and I feel Helldivers 2 is missing out on that potential. So for the strategies that I designed, the perks were mainly for the team and to help the team dynamic, but the set bonuses were for the individual player to incentivize them to use it, and to make the player not only feel powerful for the team and for other people, but to be powerful themselves in certain scenarios. And I feel that is probably what the game is missing out the most right now.
All right, that's the end of my tirade. The last stratagem is called Gideon Carrier or Fly Carrier. Its flare text reads as follows. From the wars of old, the Gideon Carrier embodies the spirit of their unit and honors all those who walk faithfully behind that flag. Be proud, Helldiver. The inspiration for this came from Warhammer 40k, actually. I was watching a part where a Space Marine plants the symbol of his chapter into the ground and it buffs the team around him. The same can be done with Helldiver 2 and the flag for Super Earth as a stratagem, and I feel it fits the universe really well. The effects are democratically and patriotically carries the flag of Super Earth into battle. You get two flags per backpack. Boosts the morale of all Helldivers in a 40 meter radius, greatly reducing flinch and decreasing reload time for all Helldivers. This is single and team reloads. Increases the damage needed to cause Ragdoll. So basically only direct hits from explosives can cause a ragdoll while close AOE ragdoll from rockets or other explosives are negated. So you got you have to take like a rocket to the chest or basically a turret shot, you know, to the leg for you to ragdoll. Everything else though will keep you on your feet and may cause some flinch, but you won't ragdoll across the floor. When flag carrier dies, the flag remains on the floor and buffs are still active in that 40 meter area. Can also plant the flag in the ground to keep the buff in a stationary place. You can unplant the flag as well and take it back and put it back in your backpack. Effects do not stack with additional flag carriers. This one's a fun one I added in. Saluting a planted flag for three seconds will give back a tiny bit of health. So the set bonus is activated by any officer type uniform or armor or democracy protects chess piece armor sets um they should look something like this the set bonus is called martyr of liberty and it reads when below half health carrier takes reduced damage as long as in range of flag if the carrier is below half health and within range of flag all teammates receive slight increased damage to all weapons if carrier is last alive with no reinforcements they will receive increased speed, damage, and reload speed. Um, so basically you become like a juggernaut at the end and you're gonna become very, very hard to kill. So these are my four stratagem ideas and all the abilities that they carried. Let me know what you think about these stratagems or if you have any other ideas for stratagems. If you enjoyed the video and wish to see more, be sure to like it and uh, thank you for watching.